Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I wanted to bring you guys another character review because I was so uh, pleased with the with with the way that the last one went. Um, but I I kind of thought about it, and there wasn't any one character that was kind of jumping out to me, calling my name, uh, you know, whispering carelessly into my ear, uh, with some Kenny G in the background, of course. Uh, so I thought I would do something a little bit different. Now I do want to say I do appreciate. Uh, before I get into it, I do appreciate the continued support, guys. Not only for the for the uh, reviews and the character uh, videos, but also for the channel in general. You know, uh, I don't really say it a lot or at all, but I am really appreciative, and I really do love uh, how much we've all grown uh, to be a little nostalgic and corny for a little while, um, for a second actually. Although there's not really a lot of nostalgia because we haven't been doing this for very long, but uh, I do uh, want to take a second uh, out of my ramblings to uh, thank you guys coherently uh, for all of your support and for your continued support. Uh, you guys uh, make uh, the videos possible and you know, I mean I have fun making them regardless of whether I get 100 views or 120 views. But uh, you know, knowing that people are enjoying them, knowing that people are laughing and having a good time, just gives me even more energy to do this, and uh, I'm thankful for that. So uh, thank you, and uh, let's get it into it, guys. So what I thought about doing for today's video, guys, I thought about doing um, a character review, but I wasn't really feeling the vibe, so I thought I would do a Black Order review. Uh, what that means is I'm going to look at all the Black Order characters and I'm going to give you guys my opinions, my predictions, and my, not really predictions, but my ass assessment of them, uh, which I think is a pretty good one. I've used, uh, you know, five out of the six Black Order characters pretty heavily um, and, uh, you know, I think I have a pretty good grasp on uh, what works about them, what doesn't work, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and how new players should uh, approach uh, their, their Black Order climb. You know, if you want to climb the big black mountain, uh, you got to start with your hands and you get on your knees and you kind of get, you kind of work your way up, if you know what I'm saying, all the way from the, from the base all the way up to the tip. Um, and so uh, that being said, guys, I thought I would give you guys my assessment, uh, my thoughts, and uh, you know, also the strategy that I had, which is not obviously not the best strategy, but I will uh, talk about uh, what I did in case you're wondering. Um, so obviously, right off the top, uh, it's very easy and clear to say that Thanos or Saint Thomas is the best Black Order character of them all. Uh, it's not really a stretch of the imagination to say that, and uh, I'm confident in saying unequivocally, uh, St. Thomas is by far the holiest of the six. Um, it's not only because he's worth uh, twice as many uh, you know, uh, materials as all the other ones, it's just top to bottom, uh, you know, skills, passive ability, um, you know, damage, uh, everything. Uh, everything is just the best, uh, bar none. He's got the highest defense. Uh, he's got probably the, the highest or the second highest attack rating of all of, all of them. Um, he's got skills that uh, will stun. He's got skills that give like status effects like poison. Uh, he's got crazy iframes. You know, he's just he's an absolute monster titan. Um, it's it, honestly a lot of the game feels like it's on easy mode when you're playing with him. He's got the best leadership in the game. Uh, you know, he's just he's just a beast, and you can even see like, don't even take my word for it. Although, if you're watching this video, you should be taking my word for it. If the alliance tournament was here, which it's not right now, most of the teams are Thanos plus two others. Uh, I know Shirog is there a lot of the time, but Thanos is the he's the man of the hour. Okay, he's the most interesting man in the world, and rightfully so. I mean, he's the He's one of the greatest villains of the Marvel Universe, so it only makes sense that he would be absolutely the best. Uh, of course, it's expensive to upgrade his gears, but if you have them, you obviously want to roll them with physical attack and all attack. You want to roll them with all defense, and the first one being either energy by level or physical defense by level. Then you want to roll the classic HP. And then I went all cooldown uh, because I want him to be able to go into his six star skill as much as possible. As you can see, he doesn't have skill cooldown native on any of his gears. So those those orange stats there at the top, none of them have skill cooldown or, um, well actually there is defense penetration, but none of them have skill cooldown. So you're gonna have to roll those natively um, on his uh, fourth gear if you want to max out if you want to cap out unless you've got a lot going for your cards 
Uh, that being said, um, his passive ability is, is like so disgusting. He's got the immunity or the HP recovery. So uh, he benefits a lot from an HP or a recovery um, obelisk, which you want to get for uh, him. Um, but there are also a couple, of, a couple of other ways that you can do it, guys. You can go with something like uh, increased damage to make his damage even higher. You can go with like try to get a double uh, immunity like stun resist, web resist, and then try to build him uh, for PvP and stuff like that. Um, obviously with ISO sets you want, you want to either go for a healing set to even further buff his survivability but it seems like most top end players will have an invincibility proc obelisk and they'll give him an ISO set like power of angry hulk because of the defense penetration and the attack proc. So those are the two ways you can build your Thanos guys. I'm not going to go into a very in-depth character review because this is not just about Thanos, this is about all of the Black Order. Um, but. I'm just kind of detailing you guys uh, very, very quickly why Thanos is by and large and way far ahead of the other ones as the top dog. His damage is top, the CC is crazy, okay? Um, the only thing that he's not super, super good at is as a striker for, for world boss battles, he only comes in when you get hit. So it, he takes a little bit of a hit there as a striker when you're comparing him to some of the other characters. And that's going to be meaningful as we move on into the, our next uh, reviews. So here we go, guys. Um, other than Thanos, who are the top dogs in, uh, in this list? Well, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, for most new players, the top dog is going to be Proxima. Uh, and we'll explain why in a little bit, but uh, basically uh, for new players, if you've never gotten a world boss character before, if you're just starting to build your roster, you've got your Loki, you've got your Shirog, you've got a couple of free tier 2 tickets from logging in and picking your nose. Um, you want to first set your sights after you started to clear world boss and you started collecting that black antimatter and stuff like that. You want to set your sights on Proxima as your first unlock. Although I did just spend a lot of time explaining why Thanos was the best one, you don't want to start to uh, work on Thanos because for starters Thanos takes twice as much uh, resources as all of the other Black Order characters so that's going to really limit um, the the amount of uh, return you're going to get on the character because you're still only getting one character so the the thought process or the logic behind this when, and why you go for Proxima over um, uh, over Thanos is because you're going to be able to reap the rewards or reap the benefits of having that Black Order character twice as fast in half the time literally in half the time so um especially if you can't clear all of the world bosses five out of five you should definitely pull your resources into getting proxima because she will get you a world boss clear on every single day including infinity thanos provided you have a specific team or one of one of a couple specific teams to pair her with but basically she'll get you a guaranteed win for all of the other days and as an added benefit, she will also potentially give you another clear as a striker. And that's where she really comes in and where she really shines, in my opinion, over all of the other world bosses, Thanos included. I would argue that Proxima is the best striker of the world boss, uh, of all of the world boss characters. The only other striker that's probably comparable to her in terms of the damage that they will pop in and do randomly for you during the fight is Supergiant. Uh, the only reason why I think Proxima is better than Supergiant is because she's less squishy than Supergiant. And uh, she doesn't need as much of a setup before she lays down the damage. You know, uh, Supergiant needs to buff herself with the mind damage uh, thing. She probably needs to pull out the, the five star skill to, to uh, get the, the aggro pulled away. But just the way you play Proxima and the speed with which she does her six star skill, um, I, I think that she's, uh, you know, pretty much a lock for the best world boss uh, striker uh, in terms of the Black Order characters. I'm not talking about every character in the game, but I would argue that for the Black Order characters, she's she's the best striker. She'll come in and easily do 50 to 100,000 damage with one of her six star skills. Um, and she can take you from, you know, being a couple hundred thousand damage short to clearing it with time to spare. So that's, that's why uh, myself and a lot of other people uh, in the community do recommend that new players uh, go for Proxima first. 
she herself will give you a clear, but then her abilities and her damage that she puts out as a striker will either make all of your other clears easier or will give you additional clears. So for example, if you have a tier one Ant-Man and you have Team Pym with Yellow Jacket and Giant Man, but you're struggling to get world boss kills on Thanos and uh, Black Dwarf because you don't do enough damage or because he's got the physical immunity shield in the case of Gary Coleman, um, you put Proxima as a striker, suddenly you've got your, your neck, you've got two clears. So that character is a, basically a two for one. Um, similarly, you can argue, you can make an argument that Supergiant fills that, that same role or a very, very similar role. Um, but just for, um, just for me personally, I prefer Proxima. I think she's easier to play. I think she's less squishy. She's more defensive. Um, she moves around more with her skills. Uh, she doesn't have the iframe on the 6 star skill the way that Supergiant does, but I just think that she's easier for new players to handle, and she's very one dimensional in her, in her playstyle. It's basically just kite around with your other skills, drop the 6, and then r rinse and repeat. Um, so that's why I think that uh, that Supergiant, or sorry, that Proxima is a lock for the, the number one uh, focus, your first focus, your first top priority for, uh, for uh, Black Order characters. Now, that is making the assumption that you are a new player who cannot clear world boss five out of five every day if you're already clearing world boss five out of five and you've just been saving your um your materials you may well consider unlocking thanos first the reason being um you're you're gonna get the same value from thanos as you or from proxima as you would from thanos except that thanos is going to be a lot more uh, powerful in things like Timeline, Shadowland, uh, Alliance Battle Day, you know, Battle World. Um, he's, a, he's a monster. He's much harder to kill than Proxima, and he still does outstanding damage. So if you're already clearing 5 out of 5 on every day except Infinity Thanos, then I would recommend going directly for Thanos. Do not pass go, do not collect 200, just go directly to St. Thomas. If, however, you're at 3 out of 5 wins for, for every day, or 4 out of 5 wins for every day, Go for Proxima first, shore up those losses, shore up those those missing days, because every day that you miss a world boss kill, that's black antimatter and chaos nordstones that you're never gonna get. So you need to make sure you're farming at maximum efficiency before you set your sights on Thanos. Okay, I think I've been clear enough with that, guys. That's, uh, that's what I would say. Then the next one is a little bit of a toss up. Uh, a lot of people prefer to go for Corvus instead of Supergiant because Corvus will also give you a Infinity Thanos uh, clear with the right team, and he's a lot safer and a lot easier to play as than Supergiant. Supergiant is basically you make one mistake and she's and she's fucking dead, or she's close to being dead. Corvus, you can make a bunch of mistakes, he'll die, and then he'll come back to life, and you can do it all over again. So he doesn't have the damage that Supergiant or Proxima has, but what he does has does have is extreme survivability, a good iframe. He's got great energy damage on his one star on his or his two star skill. Sorry, Pinwheel or maybe no Painwheel. I mean, Painwheel is his one star skill, and then he's also got the clones, which the clones are excellent. They take away aggro, they do damage, you know, just fantastic. So that's why Corvus is uh, Corvus was my third. Uh, uh, Black Order character that I unlocked. Uh, the order that I went in was I went first. Well, to be honest, guys, the actual order I went in was I got Corvus to four stars. Then I decided that I was going the wrong way because the only world boss that I was having problems with was Proxima. So then I went back and I got Proxima to six stars. Then I went and I got Thanos to six stars because I was jealous that my uh, Alliance team member or my Alliance leader actually was going to get Thanos. So I went and I rushed to get Thanos. Um, after him and then I went back and I got Corvus and then I started buying anniversary packs and I quickly got uh, Super Giant and Ebony Maw but I did grind out the first three the the good old-fashioned way uh, despite what the what the internet trolls will tell you but anyways uh, that was obviously not the right way to do it I wasted a lot of material bouncing back back and forth between characters I would have gotten Proxima faster and I would have gotten uh, Thanos faster if I had just focused on them so learn from my mistakes guys and set your sights on one character and just grind out all of the um, black antimatter and all of the gold that you need for that character uh, but don't actually don't actually level it up and I say that because um, it's better to have the the black antimatter saved 
saved at rank one in case you get lucky and you get some rank twos or threes or fours then you uh, won't have to spend the gold ranking up additional rank one antimatter to make these other fucking weird shapes so save all of it until you have either 4400 for um, all of the other black order characters or 8800 if you're going for thanos and then at the end you start pressing that green combine button and going fucking berserk watching your gold uh disintegrate faster than the trump towers um and then uh you'll have your first second third fourth fifth or sixth black order character for that matter um after corvus or after proxima first and then thanos second and then corvus third I went for Super Giant fourth, and I think that's a pretty good move. Um, she has less survivability and less sneakiness than Ebony Maw, but she uh, does a shitload of damage with her six-star skill, and she's got the um, she's got the uh, the the bait or the distraction or the aggro uh, aggro support with uh, summoning Black Bolt as her five-star skill. She's also an excellent, excellent striker. She's another striker that comes in when you are attacking. So she'll come in and do massive damage with her 6-star skill, which is very close to being on par with uh, Proxima. So I would suggest, uh, it's kind of a coin flip for you, depending on what you're looking for, but and, and also depending on your playstyle. Ebony plays a lot more like Corvus, he's very sneaky, he's got the summons, he's got massive damage with his 6-star, and it's also an iframe. He plays very similar to Corvus, actually, except that he doesn't revive. Uh, the only upside to Ebony over uh, Supergiant or uh, Corvus is that he has a much better uh, leadership. His leadership gives 40% energy attack, which is second only to um star lord but it isn't restricted to blast characters so it's actually a lot more flexible he's got one of the top five uh leaderships in the game so you might also consider that if you're low on leaderships but you have enough resources to get a black order character um and then finally uh we do have so four and five would be super giant or ebony kind of interchanged and you guys can look up gameplay videos to see how they play but basically corvus uh ebony plays like corvus he's just like a sneaky bastard who like disappears and reappears and then he summons his clones and then he disappears and reappears again uh, if you have enough skill cooldown you can perpetually chain uh, Ebony Maw's six star skill and I believe his uh, three star skill the uh, this one this shadow attack uh, or no maybe that's, that's his five star skill sorry his five and his six star skill you can perpetually chain those basically to uh, not get hit it's not the best way to output his damage but it is very very safe so uh, Super Giant's more like the home run, the risky home run, and Ebony's more like the safe, uh, you know, the safe girl from back home that, uh, you know, doesn't have the most pretty face, kind of has a busted smile, but, you know, you know she's good for a handy in the parking lot, and uh, she's always known what kind of bands you like and the food uh, that you, uh, you know, that you like to make on cookouts, so she's a safe bet. Uh, and then finally, we have uh, Black Dwarf. Uh, he's kind of relegated to the... Kind of the reject group um i know there was uh some rumor or some uh you know theory or some kind of information whatever bullshit that he was like secretly a really good black order character and that a lot of the top level characters were using him because you know he's really tanky he he um he has a lot of stuns uh and he's got the resist to uh guard break and stun and he's got the um the leadership that will give him a physical damage immunity for five seconds uh i think those reports were exaggerated i think the reports of his death uh, were not exaggerated however because i do think he's the worst of the black order characters now i am kind of speaking out of my ass here guys because you as you can see i have my black dwarf at three fucking stars so i haven't played with him personally but i have uh you know watched extensively players who have beaten shadowland players who have been uh, you know all the world bosses alliance battle I watched a shitload of alliance tournaments and Everything I saw led me to believe that black dwarf is basically a punching bag. Uh, he's good to as a diversion But other than that good luck uh, I've even read that people using black dwarf against black dwarf in the world boss battles have a hard time Because it's all physical damage and then when the fucking idiot has the physical immunity the, the boss I mean not your black dwarf when the other Gary Coleman has the physical immunity, you do shit damage, etc, etc. He also doesn't have bleed. He does have this one as well, which is good. Immune to all damage for 3 seconds, that's great. But he also doesn't apply bleed on his attacks, which is pretty unfortunate considering that's one of the 
uh, biggest uh, boons of that character when you're fighting him that even though you dodge the damage or you're immune to it you can still get the bleed applied to you which will do damage over time hopefully they'll buff black dwarf with his tier 2 passive coming soon but as it stands now I, I'm comfortable and confident to say that black dwarf is probably the worst of the uh, black order characters and the last one you should invest your resources in sorry to say all you uh, all you black dwarf fans so uh, that being said guys still invest in Lindsay Lohan if you've got the resources and you have nothing better to do uh, honestly if I don't have a better use for my uh, black antimatter after the dark after the Doctor Strange patch rolls out I am gonna blow it on uh, this fucking orange lovable monster uh, he kind of looks like Alf, actually. But uh, until then, I am going to be saving my resources. But guys, those are my opinions and thoughts on the Black uh, Order. Uh, and my order for these Black and Blue and Purple and Gray and fucking Orange Brethren. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know who you got first, who you got second. Uh, and maybe some mistakes that you made like me along the way where you upgraded the wrong one and then had to fucking double back down the dirt road. Uh, one more time. So uh, that's it for today guys, and of course if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.